Hey, what's up people? This is Krishna here and uh, welcome to part three of this tutorial series um, where we're going to cover this. Okay, um, both of these are um, use, done using the same technique. So I'm going to just show the technique. Um, in this one, you need to import the FBX file and in this one, it's just the native uh, Houdini animated geo. Okay, that's the only difference between the two. Okay, let's uh, jump right into it. Now, uh, we're going to continue where we left off in part two. So if you have not watched part one and part two, I will leave the link in the description for those. Go check it out before you come here. Okay, so let's go into the source. Let's bring in, oops, let's bring in Crag. Okay, so that's our crack guy and uh, we need to unpack him and let's bring everything. So click on this. Yep, he's right there. And let's do a time shift because this is an animated geo. So we want only the first frame. So let me delete the channels in the frame and keep it frame number one. Clamp the, to the first, delete it also, and leave it at one. So nothing happens here. Let's create a scatter node. And create, let's say, 10,000 points. Dense enough, I think. Uh, let's create, create 50,000 points. Pretty dense. Okay, and go, this is important. Go to Output Attributes tab and check Prim num attribute and prim uvw attribute. Okay, and then connect the scatter to out because we don't need the transform. We don't need to lift them up above the ground level by two. So just put it in here, go to grain constraint. Nothing is here on the viewport. That is because we need to uncheck create points from volume. Now you've got him, but again, it's not animated geo. Okay, so now. Uh, get attribute interpolate node and connect to destination geometry which is the geo and the other input just comes from the unpack node which is just above the time shift the attribute interpolate node already recognizes the two output groups we got from scatter source prim and source prim uv you can tell and that um, uses this okay so now you can see the geo is now animated with our grains connect this to the color and the geo In that way you've got them and uh, the color is set to black if you've not watched part two and there's a reason behind it <clears throat> that's to um, activate the points using the color red basically right so going to infection now now, if you scroll this, nothing, it, the geo is not moving anymore. It's not animated. And that's because inside of the solver, he's not moving. So what we need to do is we need to create a point wrangle and connect the first input to input one and type in a little expression at P equals point, open close brackets, one comma, within quotation marks, P comma at PT num. Now it will start moving. There you go. And we will say this as move geo and we will copy this and paste it in the second solver because we need that also. But we will do this before the infection. Okay, so we will do it before the infection. Okay, good. Now he moves. Yeah, it's a little bit slow, but he's moving. Uh, previously, without the move geo point wrangle, he won't be moving. Okay, so that's that. Now we got this boat going, and let's check if he does get the color red. Oh, I forgot. Before we do that, we need to change the position of the sphere because the sphere is currently sitting 
somewhere up there and it's not going to make any impact okay so let's bring oh we need to increase this to let's say 400 frames in total close yeah. okay where the hammer hits the ground is where we want the sphere okay that's the way I set it up, but you can choose different positions if you like. But anyways, I'm going to just pull this down just somewhere around there where it clips onto some of those uh, points. Okay, that's what matters. Okay, good. And I'm going to delete all the animation. I'm going to leave the sphere where it is. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, we're going to adjust the camera angle here. Like that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, perfect. And let me save this now. Let's check if he gets the right color. It happens around about frame 300, okay? So I'm going to just move the timeline to 300 or just around there. Okay, you can tell that he, in fact, does get the color. So we know that works, which is great. So let's move on to the AutoDop network. And this should technically work, right? <clears throat> Let me just move the timeline to 300 without wasting time, basically. Oh, okay, right. So he's not moving at all. And that's because in here, we need to create that okay and I totally forgot about that so let's create the attribute wrangle which is move geo just above our um, I at stop equals zero code okay so in this one however what we need to do is we cannot just move the points to number we cannot just move the points all the time. We can only move the points when it's black in color. When it's red, it should not move to the animated geo anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this code and come here and paste that. But instead of I had stopped equals zero, when red is one, move it to at P equals at P. And if it is not red, then move it to the animated geo, okay? Now that way it is going to move. Unfortunately, I have to uh, redo this now. Okay, so it definitely works. So if I look at this, first of all, the geo is moving. And second of all, it's definitely falling apart. Oh, we got a little problem here. That's because some of these points still haven't got the red color fully, okay? That's why this is happening. So you can resolve this um, in three ways. Number one is go back to your source and reduce the amount of scatter to 10,000, let's say. And I'm gonna have to run this again. Okay, and okay, so reducing the number of points has not helped by itself, okay? So if that doesn't help, you just need to go back in infection 
and increase the sub steps to two on both of these solvers. And I really hope this works. Okay, so let's check this out. So that's definitely helped it, okay? So now you don't see the points moving from red to black. You don't see that anymore. So that's resolved the issue. However, what if you want to have a lot of points in the scatter? Um, let's uh, try something else. So let's put this back to 50,000. And what we got to do is make sure that the infection spreads a little bit faster. So let's increase the infection spread inside of the solver. Let's go in here and let's increase this to, uh, I don't know, like 40 or 50 and points to search to 50. Okay, so let's go back into the AutoDOP network and let's try it again. Okay, so let's check this out. Okay, see that has also helped resolve that issue. So you need to play with these three combinations uh, to get the desired result you want. Okay, so that's that. Perfect. Uh, now in part one, part two, uh, I did not cover the actual rendering. And it's pretty simple, you know, it's, it's just I'm just going to set this up right now, okay? So let me, let me save this, disable the simulation. Uh, we have a camera, but we don't have any lights. Let me just set up a light, RS light. And just one light is enough, I think. Uh, light, area light. I'm just going to increase this to four. Good. And then I'm going to create Redshift node. And then uh, I'm just going to go into IPR and disable progressive rendering. Okay. And also I'm going to go into Redshift system. And I'm going to change the bucket size to 256 because it's GPU renderer. Um, it's better off with a larger bucket size, which is 256 in Redshift case. Um, okay, so now we need to go into Grains Vellum because this is where the rendering is happening. Now, what I have done is I've deleted the point attributes, I think in part two, uh, which is CD, uh, to delete the color. Now what we need to do is we need to assign a material to it. So let's go into shop network and create an RS material. Uh, just simple stuff. I'm just gonna make it look like a little bit of sandy stuff. Um, I don't know, something like that. Okay, good. And I'm gonna come down here quickly and reflection weight to zero. Okay, because we don't want it to reflect. It's gonna cause a lot of trouble and a lot of grain and whatnot. So let's go to render view. Oops, render view. Okay, nothing's happening and that is because you need to activate, go into Redshift, Redshift OBJ parameters and particles, render object as particles. Okay, so that way, hopefully you'll see something. There you go. So that's uh, showing out there, which is good. I think it's too bright though. So, stick a shot of that one. Okay, it's too bright. Let's, let's reduce the intensity to reuse the wall mount. 
Okay. Okay, that's uh, okay, I guess. Okay, so the color is not coming through because I have not assigned it. I've not assigned the material to it. There you go. So now, yep, yeah, there it is. So let's just increase it to, I don't know, 20. Maybe. Yep, yeah, okay, good. So let me render this out and get show you right at the end, okay? Okay, it's done now. This is the final result. Okay, right, so that's part three. So stay tuned for part four because we're going to cover this in part four, which involves crowds and converting, using all of these techniques to convert these uh, crowd agents um, to vellum grains and then uh, destroying them. So stay tuned for that. Well, I hope this video helped you. Um, if, you if it did, if you liked it, please uh, give us a like thumbs up, subscribe, share, comment, etc, etc. Thank you very much. Have a good day.